Revelation, the last chapter, chapter number 22 of the last book, the book of Revelation in the Bible. I'll read a verse of Scripture here that I've read many, 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 many times over the years, and I'd like to preach a message on this subject this morning. Revelation chapter 22, after all is said and done, going through all that great tribulation period, through the millennium, through eternity coming in, all the great things and the judgments of God poured out. Listen how God ends the Bible, how he ends it. Verse 17, and the Spirit, capital S, that means that's the Holy Spirit, and the bride, somebody tell me who the bride is. The church, that's right, uh, the Spirit and the bride say, come, and let him that heareth say, come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. I want to preach this morning on the subject, God's last call. God's last call. The last invitation in the Bible is Revelation twenty two seventeen, And he ends it all by saying, Look, y'all, before I close this thing out, let him that heareth come. Let him, let the bride, the church say come. Let the spirit say come. And drink of the water of life freely, and it's God's last call. Last call in the Bible. I'd like for us to think about that thought this morning. I don't, it's not a very pleasant thought, but there will come that day when God gives you, my friend, your last call. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, or you are saved and are not living for the Lord, this could be and may be your last call. Now, one of the biggest tricks the devil ever pulled on you is to make you think today is going to be like yesterday. You don't know that. The Bible said, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. There is not one person in this room that knows you're going to be alive tomorrow. You just think you are because you was alive yesterday and the day before and the day before and the day before and the day before, and you get to thinking, well, I'll be alive tomorrow, next, next day or two, next day or two. You don't know that, and I don't know that. Today, God may be giving you your last chance to do business with Him. God may be giving you, friend, your last opportunity to come and be saved. This may be it. Uh, you say, well, Brother Danny, you, you shouldn't tell people that because it might not be. That's right, it might not be, but it might. You don't know that. Put it this way. If, if, if I tell you today this might be your last chance and you come and get saved and then live 40 more years, you ain't lost nothing. You live 40 years as a saved person, then go to heaven. If I tell you it might be your last chance and you say, nah, he's just trying to scare me, and you don't come and it is your last chance, you're lost forever. So you can't go wrong. You never go wrong by getting right with God. Ever, ever. I mean, the best thing you can do is get your life right with God. God's last call. You think today is going to be like yesterday? It ain't going to be one day. The Bible said, boast not thyself of tomorrow. You say, well, preacher, I never felt better in my life. Well, I don't know about that. You might be like that old preacher I was listening to the other day. Uh, he said, uh, he, he's 72 years old, and he's preaching, and one of his buddies come up and he said, oh, preacher, age ain't nothing but a number. And he said, yeah, King Kong wasn't nothing but a monkey. Uh, 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 age is your age. He, he said that preacher told him, he said, uh, he said, preacher, he said, I'm 70 something, and I feel 17. And he said, you know what? You forgot what 17 feels like. That, that's true. Amen. Amen. Now, the truth is this morning, we ain't getting no younger. And we're moving toward that day when we leave this world. Now, I want to say three things this morning, and we'll go. You listen carefully. Number one, God's call to eternal life might be it today for you. This may be. He said, come. 
and drink of the water of life freely. You know what that's a picture of? When they put Jesus on that cross, they bam, hit him with those nails through there. That was a picture of Moses back in the Old Testament, or Moses' picture of it, rather, when Moses smote that rock and water came out and, and watered them people, gave them, quenched their thirst. That's what happened to Jesus Christ on the cross. You have inside of you a thirst. You have a thirst. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care how popular you are, how good looking you are, how, how, no matter what you've got, there's a thirst for something inside. And if the, the water of life is the only thing it can think it. Now, uh, uh, I heard about a preacher talk to this girl, young lady, not too long ago. And this woman said, Preacher, I want you to talk to my daughter. She, he said, she said, every time I talk to her, she keeps saying she's not ready to be saved. She wants to wait a while. She wants to wait a while. So the preacher goes over and talks to this lady. And he said, Now, they tell me that you're not ready to get saved yet. She said, That's right. She said, I'm going to get saved, but not, I'm just not ready for that yet. And the preacher looked at her and he said, Well, all right. He said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I won't even mention it to you for one year. I won't mention being saved. I won't talk to you about the Lord. I won't invite you to church for one year. Is that all right with you? And she started thinking there for a second and thought, man, a year. She said, I don't know if that's safe or not. What if I died during that year? I don't know if I want you to do that or not. He said, all right. What if I don't mention it to you for six months? Six months, don't invite you to church, don't talk to you about God, don't know. And she said, I don't know if that would be safe. If I died, it's over. I don't get another chance. I'm dead and in hell forever and ever and ever and ever. She said, six months is, is too risky. He said, all right, let's make it three months. What if I don't speak to you? And he went on down three months, one month. And he said, she said, that's too risky. Something might happen. And finally she saw it. And it hit her what she was doing. And she said, one day's risky. One day's taking a chance. You realize this morning, if you're not saved, and you say, I'm going to wait till next Sunday, you're taking a risk that you could die or Jesus could come back this week and there ain't no chance for you ever to go to heaven. You realize that. And you know what she did? She said, Preacher, I'm not taking that risk. And got down and gave her heart to the Lord. You know what your problem is? Your problem is you think tomorrow is going to be just like yesterday and the day before and the day before. We're like that. Human nature is like that. We think, well, I've been doing good all this time. I'll do it. You don't know that. I don't know that this might be my last sermon, my last chance to proclaim the gospel. I don't know that. I could be killed on the way home. The Lord could take you out or me out. Well, you say, preacher, that's just scary talk. It's fact. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. I want you to notice, secondly, this morning, the simplicity of God's last call. It's very simple. The Lord said, the Spirit says come. You know what? When we was up here, you know what that was in here? When we was, we was up here singing a while ago? The choir was singing. You seen a hand go up over here and a hand. That wasn't scripted. We don't plan that out before church. You seen somebody get up and just come down here and start praying. You know what that is? That's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is working in church. He's working right now. You can hear my words with your ears, but while I'm preaching, the Holy Spirit right now is hammering and dealing and pulling. You know what I've seen before? More than once. I seen a girl come to church one night, and she was about 17 or 18, and these, these cheerleaders from school started coming to church, and Marion, and one of them come, the friend come, friend come, and they come in and sit down on the second row that night, and I was up here with the choir, and there was a singing and everything, and I saw that girl, and she looked up, and we had a sign like that right there on the wall, Jesus has answered all your problems, and she looked up at that sign, and she heard that singing, and she started crying. Nobody said a word to her. Nobody went over and said a word. Now, who, what's doing that? That's, a, that's the Spirit saying, come. The Spirit, come. I'll never forget that night I got saved. I was standing back there on this side, and a girl turned around and said, Danny, won't you go get saved? It didn't have a bit of effect on me. I said, no, leave me alone. Ain't my time to get saved. Somebody else said, Danny, won't you get saved? I, and all of a sudden, buddy, I felt like my heart was coming out my mouth. I felt like something was tugging on me. Somebody was tugging on me. You know that little?
little feeling you got right now while I'm preaching, something pulling on you, something saying, He's right, He's right, He's right. You better listen. That's the Holy Spirit of God pulling on you and dealing with you. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning, the Spirit says, Come! Come! That's simple. And God wants you to come. And He said, The bride says, Come. The church, that's what I'm doing. The church says, Come. We're the bride of Christ. And the church is saying, That's why we run those buses. We run buses so that you'll come to Jesus. We open the doors Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, prayer meeting night, revival night, camp meeting night, youth rally time. We open the door. The church is saying, Come. Every time you drive down the road and you see a church building, I know that's not the church, it's the building where the church meets but every time you see one that you can just you can just all of a sudden saying you need to go you need to go don't every time you pass a church something says come 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 God's trying to get you to come through the spirit God's trying to get you to come through the church and he said let him that heareth say come you see how simple that is number three number three the, the, the sincerity of God's last call the sincerity of God's last call he ain't messing around, y'all. God calls, and He calls, and He calls, and He calls, and then He gives the last call. In the days of Noah, we're told that God gave, told Noah the timeline. He said, Noah, build an ark. He gave him the instructions. He told him how big, how tall, how, how, how much room that thing was supposed to have. And God said, yet 120 years. And he said, I'll destroy man that I've put on the earth. And God said, all right. He set a timeline and he said, I ain't letting it go no further than that right there. The truth is, God set a timeline on you and on this generation. We just don't know when it is. But I tell you one thing, you're taking a big chance. You're taking a big chance turning around and walking out that door saying, I'm not saved and I'm not ready to get saved. You're taking a big chance. Once you die, you don't come back. You don't get this opportunity again. You need to get saved this morning. This morning. It ain't going to get no easier. It ain't going to get no uh, 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 simpler. You'll never hear it no plainer than what you're hearing it right now. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, they, God told Noah, he said, you build that boat. And we're told I, Noah's a preacher of righteousness. Now, we don't know this, but we probably assume there's a very high probability that Noah preached regular during those 120 years. I believe he did. And Noah, he said he was a preacher of righteousness. He knew the world was going to end. He knew the flood was going to come, in, uh, come, and he undoubtedly preached. There was this big old boat as a testimony to them people that water was going to fall out of the sky. It had never happened before. Never had rain before. We're talking, uh, oh, let's see, 2300 A.D. or B.C. 2300 B.C. So for 1,700 years, it had never rained a drop. Mist, God, the atmosphere was different then. There was a protective covering around the world, so the sun's rays. That's why people lived seven and eight and 900 years. When you read in the Bible, it said so-and-so was 700, 800. You say, oh, that, that couldn't be right. It was right. They did. And they populated the earth. And we'll go into that some other time. Noah was 600. And he, he in there, and uh, uh, when the flood came, everything went all white, white, wacky. And the earth got tilted on its axis sometime worse than that. And got all the weather all messed up. The protective layer is gone. That's why you get skin cancer and sunburn and stuff like that. After the flood, people started living less and less and less and less time after that. Well, uh, Noah got that boat up there. He put that thing up there like that, and he was building it. And he'd get out there, and he'd say, I don't know how he did it, but he said, oh, bless the Lord. People, get in. Be saved by grace today. The flood's coming. The flood's coming. The flood's coming. Now, can you imagine? Can you imagine how crazy people thought he was? 120 years. That means that a man could have been born 20 years after Noah started preaching and was 100 when the flood came. And he, his mom, come in, the kids come in one day and said, Daddy, do you believe that preacher down there that water is really going to fall out of the sky? Do you think that's really going to happen? He said, Son, I'm 100 years old, and he's preaching that when I was born. I've heard that all of my life. Don't you know they thought that? 
Don't you know? People said, that old fellow's been out there preaching that boat since I, my grandma was here. I've heard that. All. That's exactly how some of you people look at it this morning. I've heard that all my life. Grandma told me that. Mamma, Papa told me. Pa, Papa was a preacher. He's always get saved, get saved. I'm still alive. The Lord ain't never come back yet. But I'm telling you, that day came when it was God's last call. You know what God did? God opened up the door of that ark and the Lord said, Noah, it's time to get in. And boy, about that time, somebody looked over and said, what in the world's that? And here come two elephants walking up, boy, uh, husband elephant and wife elephant. And here they come walking up through there and right behind them uh, uh, was two giraffes. And uh, buddy, right behind there, they, daddy giraffe, mama giraffe. And they said, what in the world? You know what that was? God's last call. He's giving them that last warning. Right behind them was two rhinoceri, rhinoceri rhinoceros, uh, whatever the plural of rhinoceros is. And uh, buddy, I'm telling you, here they come. Mama rhinoceros. Daddy rhinoceros. And I mean, here they come. And they come in, by, uh, the turtle came. And the big high flying dove came down and came in the ark. You, you know why that happened? Do you know why that happened? It would have been no problem with God just to drown the whole mess and made new animals after it was over, right? That was a testimony to that generation you better listen to what that man's telling you he's telling you the truth and God shut the door and the water fell and buddy you talk about rain it rained I ain't talking about no rain like me and you've ever seen the fountain of the great deep was open up I'm telling you brother it was like I mean 15 20 inches an hour uh, for 40 days and 40 nights I mean brother so that's come the earth cracked the earth real that's I come in mountains up there in the Blue Ridge Mountain. You see them rocks and they're all like that right there? You know how they got like that? That thing shook, brother. That thing moved. It come a flood. I mean, this world was drowned. You know, they find fossil evidence everywhere in this world where, where thousands, eight and 10,000 animals died instantly. And it wasn't, it wasn't, they all died the same, in the same hole. They ain't but one thing could have done that. That was a worldwide flood. They find fish fossils up on top of the mountains everywhere, embedded in rock. They ain't but one thing could have done that. There was water up there at one time, just like your Bible said. I don't care what that professor told you at college. God said it rained, and brother, he flooded this world out. I'm telling you, they found, they found, they have found certain animals and certain creatures whose, 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 whose body only reacts a certain way when it's scared and thousands of them found like that dead. At the same spot. Wasn't a bear or a tiger. They were running from that terrible flood. And God sent the last warning. I'm telling you, God sent the last warning. You know what it feels like today when you're preaching? I've been preaching since I was 19. And you know what it feels like preaching this day and time? It feels like I'm screaming my head off and you're sitting there with just glassed over eyes. Just You're out of it, completely out of it. You're not even hearing. You hear my voice, but it ain't going down in your heart. You're not listening. You're not, it's not getting inside you. That's a dangerous shape to get in. Listen, people, this might be God's last call for you this morning. You don't know. You don't know. You just don't know. D.L. Moody, the great preacher. October the 8th, 1871. A regular Sunday evening service. D.L. Moody was a wonderful preacher. He was a man that he didn't have an education. They, they told him he couldn't preach. He, he, didn't, he didn't speak correct English, but he robbed hell of a million souls and shook this country and pushed it toward God. Pastor of the great Moody Church in Chicago. And he said on October the 8th, 1871, many of you study history, you'll know that date. D.L. Moody stood in his church and preached to a large crowd of thousands of people. And he preached that night on what will you do with Jesus Christ. And back then, preachers were a little bit different. They, they wanted people to be under conviction for a while. And when he got to the end of the sermon, he said, all right, you've heard the sermon tonight, folks. 
I'm going to give you one week to think about it. And he said, next Sunday night, you come back and I'll preach on what will you do with Jesus Christ. Song leader, Ira Sankey, led the singing for D.L. Moody for many, many, many years. They were a team that God used to win thousands and tens of thousands of souls. Ira Sankey got up and started the invitational hymn and the words of the song were, Today the Savior calls for refuge fly. The storm of justice falls and death is nigh. And he sung that song and never finished that hymn because of the, the, they said the fire trucks were roaring down the street and the service had to be dismissed early. They never finished that song. And that's the night Chicago just about burned to the ground. The great Chicago fire. Stories were that that cow kicked over the lantern, got in the hay and burnt, burning. I don't know that that's a story they tell. Others, there's UFO stories and everything else about it. But for some reason, Chicago was destroyed that night. The whole city, almost. Look it up. D.L. Moody, the loss of life was terrible. And Mr. Moody said, I will never, ever preach again without asking men to come to Christ right then. That was God's last call. That was the last one, people. What if this is it? What if this is God's last call for you? You've been fooling around, won't even live right, won't even read your Bible, won't pray, won't do right. What if this is God's last call for you this morning? What if it is? I'll tell you another story about D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody, the great evangelist, had a class of young men. Most of these young men were already saved, and one young man kept refusing. And Mr. Moody would sit and talk to him. And he'd sit and talk to him, and he said, why don't you get saved? I want you to get saved. Go to heaven with the rest of us. He said, listen, this was back in the day when young, if you want to make a lot of money, you'd go out to California. He said, I'm going west, Mr. Moody. He said, I'm going west and I'm going to make a fortune. He said, when I get back, I'll give my heart to Jesus Christ and take him as my Savior. Every time he saw him, he tried to talk to him. It wasn't but a few weeks later till that man, that young man, got seriously ill. They thought he was going to die. And they called Mr. Moody and said, you got to come. He went to the hospital and there was that boy laying in the hospital bed and he, Mr. Moody said, well, I come to see you. Well, will you take the Lord Jesus Christ now? And he said, his voice was weak. And he said, I told you, preacher, I'm going out west. And when I get my money, I'll come back and I'll take Jesus as my Savior. You say, that's crazy. Ain't no crazier than what some of y'all doing this morning. You wait another week. You wait another week. Another and another till you ain't going to have none. Well, he got better. He got better and got all right. And it wasn't long after that, Mr. Moody was in his, in his, in his work. And that young man come in and stuck out his hand. He said, Mr. Moody, I'm feeling great now. I just thought I'd come by and say goodbye. I'm going out west. And Mr. Moody urged on him the claims of Jesus Christ and says, son, be saved. Turn your life. Give it to Jesus. Come to the Lord this seed. And he got mad. And Dale Moody had his hand on his shoulder. He just jerked his hand away and said, I told you, I'm going out west. Don't you ever speak to me again. I'll get saved when I get back. And turned and walked out the door. Mr. Moody said he just felt like something just snapped. Like just something just let go, like you flipped the light off or something. Later that evening, a woman in a veil, a, a, uh, uh, like a cover of shawl, come, come beating on his door. Mr. Moody! Mr. Moody! He came to the door and said, come, he's in the hospital, he's sick again, he's sick. That night, Moody went to the hospital again to pray with that boy and to talk to him and look at him. And he said he, said he was laying there stiff like this in the bed and he couldn't move, couldn't talk, and his eyes was wide open, I guess maybe with a stroke or something, but they didn't know what it was then. And it was back in the 18, late 1800s, and he's laying there like this, and Mr. Moody said, he said, I don't know if it's going do any good or not. He told me never to speak to him again. And they said, pray. He got down and he said, dear God, 
Help him, Lord. Please, God. Help him. I asked him in Jesus' name, Son, will you call on him? He said, that boy just looked up and stared like that. And all of a sudden, he opened his mouth and said, Too late! Died right there in that bed. God saying it's too late. And just a few hours before that, he told the preacher, don't you ever talk to me about this again. That was God's last call. I'm going to tell you something, buddy. You talk about a scary movie. You talk about horror. You talk about total fear, unbelievable fear gripping your soul. If you went today and something happened to you and you lifted up your eyes and, buddy, you was going down, 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 down into a pit and you hear demons laughing and screaming and you feel the heat start burning you and everything and then you hear my voice saying, God's last call, God's last call, God's last call. I ain't joking. I ain't. There does come that time when God says this, you last James. I'm talking to you Christian people too. It's been fooling around. Get right with God. I'm talking to you that have never been saved. Get saved here this morning. You never know what's God's last call. You say, I don't want to be scared like that. Well, you'd be glad if you got right and saved here this morning and the Lord come tomorrow. You'd be glad I told you. I haven't done you wrong. I've done you right by warning you. This may be God's last call.